only 2% of startups make it. So it is, it is, it is tough. Get the knockbacks, get the knockbacks and just keep going, keep going. I mean, you pulled up a day in a lovely Porsche. Mm. Uh, I see everything you're doing on Instagram. I've seen the helicopters, all that type of stuff and traveling the world and doing all these amazing things. How did you know what to do? I didn't. It was all just mistakes and failing. Every time you make a mistake, you've learned something, haven't you? And then two grand a day, something like that. And I could never really break past that. And then I dropped this tracksuit and done 30 odd grand or 50 odd grand in two hours. And I was like, I could be on Twitter. I rang the bank for another loan and they said, we can't give you any um, any more money. So they said, you need to put some something against it. So I said, all right, I'll put my house against it. I put my house against it and didn't tell my missus. <laughs> we had to call back like 800 grand worth of stock from stores, give all the stores credit notes. So give them all the money back. And then we've got all this stock we can't sell. 800 K's worth we stuck with. We had to get like new warehouses to hold it in and stuff. Did, did any part of you feel like an imposter. You've got to do something someone else isn't going to do. You've got to push that limit. Because I have this thing as everything's going to end tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I always think everything's just going to end. Don't quit. Never quit. It's the only way to guarantee failure is quitting. Was there any other sketchy scenarios where you thought, actually, this is this is a risk. We could lose everything. So here. today we are joined by Ben Mercer, CEO of Mercia, a clothing brand. You've probably seen it in JD all over the place. It's absolutely everywhere now. Uh, first and foremost, mate, thank you for coming on the show. Um, how are you? I'm good, mate. Thanks for having us on. No, no worries at all, mate. Um, obviously, you're a lad from Manchester, yeah. building out this brand, which has become more than probably just a few hoodies and that now. Obviously, you're all over the place, seeing your Instagram, doing things all over the world. How does a lad from Manchester get to this position? Tell us a little bit about how you started out. Um, so, from early, 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 uh, when I was, say, 10, 11, 12, I, I always bought and sold stuff, so sweets at school, anything I could get my hands on where I could buy something cheaper and sell it for more. So mm -hmm. I always had that like tenacity to make money right, okay. from a really young age. And as as I got older, I just developed more and more skills and started buying and selling bigger value things and then got onto uh, Mercy in 2017 when I was um, away in Cambodia. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to start a headwear brand and it's going to work. How did you get influenced as a young lad, like to get into that? Obviously, just having that mentality, does that just come from nowhere? Yeah, it. Yeah, I. From young, I always, I, I always wanted to make my own money. Like mm -hmm. I always thought I want to make money. So, it wasn't the thing of, I enjoyed doing it. Like I enjoyed the everything going into making money. So, it just developed over time. Like none of my parents were businessmen or. Mm -hmm. Uh, mum wasn't a businesswoman. She was a hairdresser, still is, and dad was a fireman. So there's no one there who was like business and that. And I just followed the path. It was just sort of my own path I went on. Did you look up to anyone at the time? Um, no, there was, there, was, there was no one at the uh, forefront of like, I want to be like that person. There was no. So, so it was just a, it was just It random. was just something that was in me that I, I always thought, I want, to, I want to be successful and I want to have freedom to do what, what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go down the route of looking at normal jobs and that? Yeah, so I, when I was in college and stuff like that, I just worked at, uh, worked in the traffic centre at USC, a store there. And then I ended up being a ground worker, driving dumpers and all that, working on the roads and being a gang gun and doing night shifts on the motorways and stuff like that. But then I had mercy just ticking along. Mm -hmm. So I was just always on my phone checking my sales and stuff. And then when it got to a point where I needed to do Mercy a couple of days a week, mm -hmm. then I was, I was doing driving jobs for my father-in-law, just a stationary company, mm -hmm. just so it was paying the mortgage while Mercy was like in infancy. How did you, if you, if you strip it right back then, right, yeah. to getting, like, getting this to become a thing, what, what's the process? Because I, again, you don't have to give away your secrets, but there's going to be a lot of lads who look up to you now and think, I want a brand in a, in a store. I mean, I've been there. Yeah. I tried it with clothing when I was younger. It, I quickly realised it wasn't for me. I think I didn't realise how much was involved. Yeah, it, it's tough and the odds are stacked against you. So 95% uh, of clothing brands fail within the first two years. Mm -hmm. And then after five years, it goes to 98%. So like only 2% of startups 
make it so it is it is, it is tough um you've just got to like not give up on something and mm-hmm. just keep get the knockbacks get the knockbacks and just keep going keep going you will when you start your products will be shit mm-hmm. and they will get better the more factories you find and mm-hmm. the more you learn and develop your own knowledge as well how did you know what to do i didn't it was all just mistakes and failing that was that was it yeah yeah it's a lot of wasted time a lot of wasted money but every time you make a mistake or every time you make a mistake you've learned something haven't you and then in the end you just narrow that down hopefully get somewhere What's happening, guys? I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If you are, please hit that like, hit the subscribe button, and press the notification bell so you don't miss another episode. What was your first product? First product was um, suede caps that I had made in London, and I've still got one now, and, oh, they were shocking, mate. I look at it now, I think, how mad is that I tried selling them? And what's, what was the process? Was it just literally making a cap, trying to sell it on oh, this, social? Was it a This website? was like a small company in London who was like, yeah, we can do caps, um, and it was just ready-made caps, just embroidered the signature on it. Mm-hmm. That was it. I don't even think he had internal labels. I didn't have anything on it. It was just a cap with a signature on it. And he had three caps, and then I went into three T-shirts that just said Mercia on it, and then tracksuits. But along the way, I was having like murders from factories sending the wrong stuff, the wrong fits, colours not being right, prints not being right, but it happens with... Everyone who starts a clothing brand, mm-hmm. you, there's going to be nightmares along the way. It's just how it is. The name Mercia, obviously I know your name's Ben Mercer. Yeah. So it's quite nice that the name's so similar. What's the reason? Uh, so Mercer comes from the French surname Mercia. And so like, um, say a smith in the UK would have come from a blacksmith yeah. years ago. Mercia would have been a dealer in textiles and fabrics in French, in France. So it's worked out quite well. Yeah, it's, clearly, it's, it's quite industry. fitting, yeah. Did you ever think about doing anything else other than clothing? Um, like, I know you had the, these jobs to support yourself, pay the mortgage, yeah, and this, that, and the other. I always bought and, so I always bought and sold, but I never knew how to make a business. Mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd be onto things quick. So when I started seeing things happening in the UK, like a selfie stick, I'd find a supplier and manufacturer in China and get them all over, and then just start selling them on like a big cartel website. Yeah. Like £100 to make a site. I was buying them for like £1 something or £2, selling them for 15 quid, and then as soon as that hype had finished, I'd get rid of that, and then I'd start something else. But then I was like, it's good getting this quick, fast money, but it wasn't, there's was no longevity in it. So I had to learn how to start a business and, do you know, something that has a bit of longevity and you can just keep running with so what was your first kind of feeling of actually we we might have something here? Um, so the the brand's known for the badges, isn't it? Like yeah. the, the badges are everywhere. The badges of what's is what's made the brand. Um, I brought out a grey tracksuit, a badge tracksuit, and it took me a couple of months to sell it, and it sold out. And then about six months later, I ordered another five hundred to be made because people were ask, asking for them. And at this point, it was doing around two grand a day, something like that. And I could never really break past that. And then I dropped this tracksuit and done, I can't remember the figure, it was either 30, 30 odd grand or 50 odd grand in two hours. And I was like, I could be on Twitter. And that was just rinse and repeat of the same method as well. It, you just hit something in it. Yeah, we just hit something. But the, yeah, it just, what happened was it blew up in London first mm. instead of Manchester. And then it, it worked its way up north. Right, I see. Mm. That's that's a weird way to do it, isn't it? Because normally you, you crack your own city first, don't you? Then build you out. Sit here, your friends, and build out and build out. But no, like London, and then came up. When you were, what changed when when you started making that? When you got that thirty grand order within two hours, and you started realizing, did you have the means to supply that for the order? No, um, no. So, uh, in the, what I was doing at one point was getting personal loans, putting it into the business, personal loan, personal loan, personal loan. And then um, I rang the bank for another loan and they said, we can't give you any um, any more money. So they said, you need to put some something against it. So I said, all right, I'll put my house against it. I put my house against it and didn't tell my missus. <laughs> and then it took off. Mate, what was if it went the other way? Yeah, I knew it was going to take off. When did like, you- I, I could see everything, so I knew it was going to work. Before it was in Foot Asylum, like 12 months before it, in my head, it was already in there. So when it went in, I was like, 
yeah, I knew it was going to go in. And then the same with JD and stuff like that. So, okay then. So I want to talk about that. Like we use, you know, wherever you are, whether it's yeah. JD, Foot Asylum, no matter where it is, how do you go about getting a brand into them? Like how easy is that process or hard? So th- you you are like, obviously they, they have buyers. So th- they see the new brands coming through and they'll keep their eye on them anyway. Mm-hmm. And they'll watch them and stuff like that. So Foot Asylum will will chance around on brands first. They want like the new upcoming brands. Mm-hmm. So we uh, we had an agent at the time, they got us in um, Foot Asylum and then it, it went big in Foot Asylum. And then obviously JD then see things they're doing and brands that are coming through and doing well. And then when they know brands are secure and there's potential there, then JD come along mm-hmm. and then it, it just get bigger and bigger. Is it what you see? Like, because instantly this is, I mean, I, I'm assuming a lot of people think the same thing as me, but when you see a brand in JD, yeah. you think instantly they're killing it, they must be smashing it. Is that always the case, or can you actually be struggling when you're in them shops? Um, I don't, I, I can only talk about my experiences because mm-hmm. I, I don't know how other brands sell in there and stuff like that, but um, they wouldn't have it stocked if it wasn't selling. Right, I see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So one not have it in the store. Yeah, yeah, I get that. It'd just be out. So any brands in there, I'd assume are selling, yeah, unless they get dropped. You talked about obviously putting your mortgage on the line and your missus yeah. didn't know about it. What other... Because I'm assuming that Labine, have been... Although you knew, you, you had that feeling like we're going to do well, you believe in yourself clearly, mate. I mean, from a young age, you can clearly tell that. Was there any other sketchy scenarios where you thought, actually, this is, this is a risk. We could lose everything here. Yeah, there's been like loads um the biggest one was uh we had psg bagatti moe and shandon all came after us for the badges Bloody hell. all at once um we got through that like we sailed close to the close to the wind but we got through that one but what what i didn't realize was moe and shandon also own a cheap champagne called mercia right right I so see. there's like yeah you, the badges and the name Mercia, we own that way, Mercia Champagne, mm-hmm. which I wasn't aware of. So they was like, you ha- this was only last year. There was like, you need to change your name. I was like, change the name, the, the business is gone. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Of course, so, that's the brand, isn't it? Yeah, we had like tough times trying to navigate through that, but um, they hadn't updated their UK trademark for five years for their name. Right. So I cancelled their trademark and took it off them mm-hmm. and said... You can have the trademark back if we can do a coexist agreement. Mm-hmm. So then they got the trademark back and we do a, do a coexist so we can live side by side. So do you have a relationship now with them or is it a case no. of... No, no relationship. No, 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 not at all. But it, it was tough. It was like... Um, we had to call back like 800 grand's worth of stock from stores, give all the stores credit notes. So give them all the money back and then we've got all this stock we can't sell. 800k's worth we're stuck with we had to get like new warehouses to hold it in and stuff how do you know about building a team and how how do you learn that i don't it's something that uh putting structure in place is is was probably something i started doing i should have done it earlier mm-hmm. but obviously i've never done that never built a team so it's just right i'm stretching myself too far here i need we used to have a freelance designer. It's like, we need full-time senior designer. We need junior designer. And then, like, we need a merchandiser controlling everything that's coming in, going out, delivery dates. And then I'd be in the warehouse too much instead of looking at designs that I can be doing. So, like, I need a warehouse manager. And then just try and build out. But now I've got to a point where I'm employing people better than me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the brand, because I, I can take it as far as my knowledge. But to go even better and bigger, you've got to take on people better than you. So what do you think your your skill is? Do you think it's design? Do you think it's networking, business? My, my thing is, I love the creative, creative aspect of it. Mm-hmm. I'm very good at um, saving money. I'm, I'm quite good with, I've, yeah, quite good with money anyway. Mm-hmm. So I enjoy that element of it. What I don't like is all the bullshit stuff behind, behind the scenes, like the back office mm-hmm. so let people look after that i'll be the creative side i can manage the finances 
anything else, I need to delegate that to other people. Were you, when you were younger, Ben, were you from money? No, or not. I know no, you said your dad was a fireman. And yeah, yeah. I uh, grew up at Terry Styles with my mum. See my dad weekends. Yeah, weren't like, no. I and never it, went on like the, the school trips abroad or anything like that. The reason we I ask you that is because obviously, I mean, you pulled up a day in a lovely Porsche. Mm. Uh, I see everything you're doing on Instagram. I've seen the helicopters, the Mercy yeah, helicopters yeah. and the, <laughs> all that type of stuff and traveling the world and doing all these amazing things. And again, well, first and foremost, I congratulate you because that, Thank you, you're mate. living the dream, bro. Like yeah. that, that's unbelievable, and and you've backed yourself. And I always that's my, like, I always yeah. tell people to back themselves, and I feel like that's one of the biggest things people lack that that maybe the first hat doesn't work, or the f- and they just kind of give up. Whether it's a YouTube, yeah. whether it's a podcast, no matter what it is, a lot of people, you know, I like the two percent thing. I think in podcasts, something like only the top five percent get past episode ten. It's mental, isn't it? We're, we're sixty four episodes in. I feel like we haven't started yet. Yeah, it's brilliant. So, yeah. so I feel like ultimately there's got to be that. And I feel like with what you've done, you've clearly done the same thing. When was your first taste of that when you spent some money? Um, so what, once I started spending and I was so invested, I was like, there isn't any turning back now. Mm-hmm. I put too much of my time into it. I can't go back working for someone now because this is all I've known for 18, 24 months now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd put a lot of money into it and wasted a lot of money. So I was like, there's no turning back. It, mm-hmm. it has to happen. So even if I, di- I didn't take a penny out for two years, but even if I had to keep going for five without taking a penny out, I would have done it. Yeah. Because it wasn't, there was no other option. There wasn't a plan B. It was mercy or nothing. What was your first treat? Uh, it was... Uh, oh, it was, it was um, a gold Rolex Day Date. Uh, it wasn't brand new or anything. It was the same age as me, so it's like 1991. Mm-hmm. I had like an old vintage one. And that's, that's, that is my most sentimental piece. Like things can go, come and go for me, cars and anything, but that's probably one thing I'd never get rid of. How did you know it was the right time to buy that? So um, I pro- probably started making money two years before I started spending money. Right, I see. So because I have this thing of everything's going to end tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I always think everything's just going to end. So yeah, I'm the same. for a couple of years, I was, I was making really good money, and I just. Didn't touch it, didn't touch it, didn't touch it. And then I was like, I'm going to buy that for my birthday. And then I'd done that and then I was like, I'm going to treat myself to a nice car and then, yeah. I know I know. it's, to a lot of people, it's like, it's just buying a watch. Yeah. How did that feel for you when you look back at obviously where you've come from? I never thought I'd have anything like that. I, I, I always thought I'd do well, but part of me was always like, what if I never... I never have anything nice, so that gave me hunger and determination to make sure I put myself in a position where I can enjoy things mm-hmm. and do nice things. Um, but yeah, when I got that, I still remember. I still remember getting it now, like opening the box and stuff. I was like, "Wow, it's mine." Did Did any part of you feel like an imposter? And the reason I say that, Ben, is because I feel like with the content PT business that yeah. I've got, when I'm working with certain it could be an athlete, it could be a celebrity, it could be a whatever whatever it may be, it could be a big brand that I've always wanted to get in with. And when I finally do it, I'm like, fucking hell, like, they're yeah. working with me and they could have picked this game. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and I almost like sort of pinch myself a bit, even now, mate, like, yeah. even to be fair, mate, even sitting here with you, because I, I look at your stuff and like, I've got some of your clothing. Yeah. So even like, in, or seen it in uh, whatever, whatever shop it is, and then to be sitting with you and understand how you operate and this is not taking it away from you, but you're just normal lad. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you know people what I mean? Say, like, yeah, people like uh, from where I grew up, they're like, "It's meant how you've not changed and stuff like that." I was like, I could never change because I'd be doing myself a disservice, sort of thing. Like, mm. I wouldn't be me. I'd be acting as someone else, and I couldn't keep up an act. So it's yeah. just like, <laughs> I, I am what I am. Like, do you ever feel the it. need to like put on a suit and be that guy? Nah. Do you know what? In in um, like streetwear and stuff because you're selling streetwear like no matter what meeting you can just go to in streetwear so i went down to london a couple of months ago to um a nice restaurant for a meeting with some um sp- like finance specialists and i walked in like hoodie and jeans trainers and they had like three piece suits on tied and stuff and i was just sat there in a hoodie and a pair of jeans but and there's like you know is this what you dress like just all the time i was like pretty much yeah yeah, it's crazy, unless it's a wedding or something, yeah. Where are you at now with your business? Where is it? 
Uh, it's in a really good position at the minute. Uh, there's some things happening uh, that should be good. Uh, we're going to push uh, new territories. So, so we've done excellent in the UK, really good. It's now about pushing into other countries, other mm -hmm. territories, um, and just seeing where we can go with that. The next, that's like the next phase of the business. What's your thoughts on the fashion space at the mo like certainly streetwear like do you think it's going in a good direction it's strange at the minute because everyone it's going a lot of people are either going proper streetwear mm. or going into like wovens which is just like your cargoes your windbreakers your outdoor stuff you know your outdoor yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, it's gone so outdoor now so it's people are taking two different directions um we we are going more so just track suits like streetwear streetwear um Heavy fabrics, bigger prints. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a, a bit of a new direction you'll see, like for the rest of this, this year, October, stuff like that. Especially, you'll see some nice new pieces coming through mm -hmm. that I'm excited about. I've not been excited about new drops for a while. The summer drop we've done a shoot with yesterday, or day before yesterday, that was really good. Mm -hmm. Some really nice pieces there. And then Q4 going into winter, I'm really confident it's a nice collection. Because I know plenty of people with brands and yeah. they're just not you right yeah. and they're just not on your level what is it that makes you you like what makes your brand successful do you think it's you behind it the uh, incredible team or do you think it's the actual product because the way i look at it right and again i don't know enough about the industry i suppose but from my experience when i had my little you know tone the water with the clothing stuff it was everyone was buying the same stuff from the same suppliers, the same stuff. They were going on Alibaba, they were yeah. going to China, they were going to Portugal, Turkey, wherever it was. And I was like, well, we can all do the same thing here. So then, therefore, have we all got a chance? Or do you really think you need that thing? So what, what is it for you? You need um, a brand DNA. So mm -hmm. something that is recognised by the brand. So ours was the badges. Like We were not, we're known for badges and mm -hmm. we, we made a massive impact on the badge people started messing about with badges and doing the badges so that was that for us that had a dna and mercy and it related to uh, france and paris so that gives us our brand dna and who we are so like i could we we could do a say a hoodie for example with just the shapes of our badges on mm -hmm. like nothing on it and you'd know it was mercy without it's saying Mercier anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because people just know us for that. It's a good idea, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's something to thought about, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, you just need the DNA. Yeah. With, obviously, you work with boxers, you work with different people. Um, how important is that, having certain brand ambassadors or influencers or people on board? For me, it's more, I think, I think uh, five, six, seven years ago, I think it worked really well. For me now, it is... I have to get on with the person mm -hmm. and the person also has to like the brand, not just yeah. chuck a load of money at someone and say, wear this and then they post a picture and you're like, you can really see through it now. Like, yeah, of course you can. Because it's been so diluted. So for us, it's like, if I get on with them personally and I know them on a level and they do fit the brand, then we can do something. If they don't fit the brand, it's pointless. It's not going to work. So what is that someone then? Because there's, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who'd love to model for you yeah. guys what do you what do you look for like other than i've just got to get on with them because surely there's certain people you get on with who wouldn't fit the brand as well yeah yeah for sure the, there is yeah um so we've done this if we're talking about models we've done a shoot um the summer shoot a couple of days ago and it turned out two of the guys we've used in the past grew up together in ireland mm -hmm. and like so when you're on i get on, get on with them as well didn't know they knew each other so when you're on the shoot, when everyone's just getting on and it looks natural, it looks organic, it's not like really stiff and someone being really posing stuff. So at one point in the shoot, they just like fucked off with the camera and was just messing about with the camera. And, yeah. just, and it just looks really organic. Yeah, I get that. Like, so yeah, it looks like a real lifestyle, what they get up but to. But how do you know before that point, before you, you don't, put them on it, shit? It's set, just like, trial, and, trial and error every yeah. time. Mm -hmm. So we will have... I've used um, models in the past and been like, I don't think we're going to use anything from this. So what? So leading from that then, what would you say up to this point, Ben, was has been your biggest kind of error or mistake with a brand? If you don't know by now, I run a business called The Content PT. I create content for influencers, PTs, online coaches and fitness brands 
all around the world. So if you are someone who's in need for sexy content for your social media, or you really want to maintain a competitive edge in your industry, drop me a DM on Instagram. Oh, uh, well, you think we shouldn't have done that, or that campaign was a bit, bit much like... Oh. I mean, we've, we've done a... I mean, we get some slack, it's a bit of flack sometimes when uh, we, we use the motorbikes and stuff if we've not got helmets on. You get a person dropping us a message in that, but biggest mistake. I mean, you always bring out pieces that don't sell. Mm -hmm. Not everything sells. Mm -hmm. um, you'll bring something out that you think is going to sell and it just doesn't. Mm -hmm. And you're like, shit, I fucking got that wrong. And then instead of crying about it, don't like, there's no point crying over spilt milk. Just forget about it. Go on to the next thing. Cause mm -hmm. it's not going to change anything. Yeah. So just move on. Do you still have that fire? where you know you said you feel like you'd lose everything tomorrow do you still feel like that or do you feel like you're in a position where you know you're not you're not going I, anywhere i do feel like we're quite secure now mm -hmm. yeah i think things are in place where we are secure um it it's that's only subsided in like the last 12 months mm -hmm. but for six years i was like yeah it's all gonna end tomorrow 100 mm -hmm. which is is mad but that gave me that hunger and that you've got to keep showing up you've got to keep showing up you've got to keep showing up because of did think it was going to always end. With the socials, Ben, like, how important do you think that is? Like, social media presence? Huge. It's do, you like, do you think it's everything? Yeah, it's like the news for everyone now, isn't it, as well? Yeah. If you want to see something, used to be in magazines, didn't it? Like, if you wanted to see something, buy something, it would be on TV. Now it's just on your phone. Yeah. If you post something and a thousand people see it, that's... If you, you could get a few sales from them thousand people who've just seen something. Yeah, Free posting, it's taking you two minutes. Yeah, so I, I think post, 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 yeah. I think, again, I think for like, when we're talking about influencers or ambassadors or, or whatever you want to call them, I feel like that is, because firsthand, obviously with the boxing, when I met you originally, and I'd known about the brand. And then when I saw it in that world, I was like, actually... I like the brand more now, which was weird. Yeah. But I would, and this is me being purely honest, mate. I was never, I never wanted to, I never bought the brand. Yeah, yeah. I never literally bought an item of clothing from the brand at yeah. all, up until I saw it in the boxing because it fit my narrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get, I get that. How much of that kind of do you think about? Do you actually think, right, if we work with this guy, we know we're going to appease this market? Or is it a case of, no, we like the guy, whatever? Um, so if we're talking about, Josh Kelly, how, yeah, we, yeah. how we met. Um, I got introduced to Josh. I had a meeting with him and I was just like, he's a sound guy. He's a, he's a good guy, good looking guy, good boxer. Do you know what I mean? He, he fits the bill mm -hmm. and he's cool. Do you know what I mean? So it it was natural. And when you get on with someone, it makes you want to do it more. Do you know what I mean? But from a from a brand's perspective, speaking purely business here, like how much of the red tape or the politics do you have to kind of tiptoe around? So for instance, if you use a boxer like Josh, there's a good chance you're not going to work with his opponent or would you like, do you know what I mean? Or is that a case of like how, how much loyalty goes into it over business? Because um, for me, I know when I work with these, certainly Josh, like Josh is a, he's a lovely lad. He's, he's a mate of mine yep. and I've worked on his last six, five, six fights now. And I'm always very mindful of, I've got his genuine best interest and I don't want to put myself in a position where actually, do you know what? Like I want to do everything right by him, but yeah. at the same time, I've also got business to run. Yeah, 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 I get that. So how much of that do you think about or is that not something that you consider? Uh, not really, I had to think about it because the, the Josh thing was purely for, I was just doing it. I wasn't looking to go and do it anywhere else. I wanted to bring out new gym, um, gym wear. One for me because... I want it, when I'm in the gym, I don't want to be wearing Nike. Mm -hmm. I want to be wearing Mercia because it's my brand. And if someone sees me in a Mercia top in the gym, they're like, oh, I like that top. It actually happened a couple of days ago. Someone was like, that top smart, is that your brand? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, yeah. He was like, I didn't know you'd done gym wear. So I just want to wear it yeah. in all aspects of my life. And then Josh fit the bill as well mm -hmm. for, for the gym wear side of it. Yeah, I see. So I weren't trying to dominate any market such as like going to boxing. I just thought he fit the bill for the performance stuff. Yeah. yeah. Is that something that you want to go into more, the gym wear stuff? We have we we did it in the past actually. We've done it about eighteen months ago or two years ago and it was good. Mm -hmm. Um so that's why we've done it again with Josh. But we are gonna go 
yeah, we are going to keep it going, yeah. Do you do you have good relationships with other brand owners? Because again, I'm just speaking as the average Joe who are listening or watching this thing, and actually, I want to get in the brand space, whatever, like a clothing brand. Because a lot of people would say, certainly in the podcast world, mate, right? I believe it is far better to collaborate with. In some, we don't even have to collaborate, but almost just respect. Yeah, that they're doing their thing. I would never speak bad about another podcaster. With clothing, is that the same, or is it? A, is everyone like, nah, you're in your lane, I, stay away. I think um, some brand owners see it as proper competition, like they see proper competition. Mm-hmm. With me, I think there's there's enough food at the table for everyone to eat. So yeah. like, just crack on. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, I know a few brand owners and get on with them well. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, get on. There's no like, oh, you own a brand, I own a brand. Do you see people know. trying to copy you? Yeah, yeah, we get yeah. We, we, yeah, yeah. Because I've seen bits and bobs with yeah. badges and stuff now. Yeah, which, yeah, which it. maybe is it just because I've been looking for it because I've seen your stuff. Yeah. But I've definitely seen that. I'm thinking, oh, you know, I wonder how they take that. Yeah, you know what? It, it used to piss me off. It used to, and it used to get to me and stuff. And then now I'm just like, I'm not really bothered. Mm-hmm. Like, it's because you're in your own lane. I yeah, suppose, just it? yeah, they just yeah, crack on. You do use your stuff. I'll do mine. But yeah, you get it, but it's, it's flattery, isn't it? You're yeah, doing exactly. something right. If someone's copying your designs, you're doing something right. Do you take inspiration from others? Yeah, I take, I take inspiration from... Where I take most inspiration from is um, fits. So like, I'll look at high-end brands, mm-hmm. uh, your high-end brands, and take um, influence from them. But I like looking at fits and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because... The reason I asked about other brands and brand owners and stuff, if you look at Represent yeah. or you look at another brand like them, I'm a fan of Represent. I think they're, they're brilliant. And what I really like about them more than the clothing is the community. Yeah. I think it's mint because I think ultimately more people are training, more people are wearing their... I mean, it, it's great marketing for them, but yeah. at the same time, it's nice to kind of feel part of that. And I think ultimately, I think any brand should do that. I think that that's always going to offer something, yeah. you're offering that. Do you think about community or do you think it's about sales? Um, yeah, I feel with Mercy, there's like, the Mercy customer's like, almost like a cult. Like the Mercy customer's loyal to Mercy. Mm-hmm. Like we have really good loyal customers. Mm-hmm. Um, and we get mess- we, we get some messages off people and stuff like, just for example, I had, I had, a, I had one the other week actually and it, it was a tough one. So, a girl messaged me and said, um, a girl I work with, little brother's just passed away, unfortunately, been really ill, and he wanted to be buried in his Mercy tracksuit. And I was Bloody like, hell, fucking hell. Yeah. So, like, you don't realise an impact your brand has on people. Like, some people really love it. Mm-hmm. And it's mad. And I was like, fucking hell, I didn't really know. It took me a while to write back anyway. To put, I was like, that's mad. It's mind-blowing stuff. Mm, like, man. Uh, yeah, crazy. Do you... Because obviously the brand's grown. Yeah. Your personal brand's grown. Do you get noticed now? Uh, yeah, I've been noticed a couple of times, yeah. And how does that feel for you? Um, I just find it a bit, I find that a bit mad. Do you like it or not? I, no, I, like, I do like it, yeah. I do. I think it's cool, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Is that something that you ever considered when you were growing a brand? Did you want to be known? No, no it's, that, was ne- that never entered my head, that. But I think that's changed through... Um, that's changed through brand customers now want to see who's behind the brand mm-hmm. who are the people doing this brand I want to know about them as well so that's why podcasts are getting bigger and you see a lot more brand owners on the, the brand's Instagram now Yeah, true. whereas people didn't really used to put it on so you think that world. do you think that's important then for the, yeah for the I think brand it, owner? I, I think it's massive yeah from like a personality yeah. point of view yeah if you look at like you say represent mm-hmm. that community building is through them doing that as well yeah. showing you their lifestyle like come along on our journey yeah because when I look at when I look at them I think I think more people are probably interested in George and Mike than the brand themselves in yeah. some, in some way I know what they're up to and stuff like that yeah have you considered doing that uh, what going down that route like YouTube and documenting everything um, and... yeah yeah I would, I would do I would do it yeah um, it's something we may do actually mm-hmm. going in the future mm-hmm I would say do it, mate. And the yeah. reason I say that is not not if the community thing grows, brilliant. Yeah. But I also think for you, mate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, imagine looking back when you're in your sixties, thinking, "Fuck, oh, we had a good ride." There. Yeah, yeah. Like you know I do I mean? try and capture 
I don't capture enough enough footage, but I should capture more. Like, because that is one thing that sticks with me. Like, I want to look back in years to come and look at clips and be like, you okay, know, that was good. That was a good ride. How old are you? 32. And it's, it's a bit of a mad question, mate, but how are you? Like, deep down, how are you? Are you good. happy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm more content now. Uh, good days, bad days, every person does. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what you do, what business you're in. Football, a millionaire, billionaire, everyone has good days, bad days. Um, and yeah, good. and what's, a, what's a, a normal day for you now? Uh, uh, the position your brand's in? Like, what, um, what are, are you... I'm going to just... This is what I would imagine, right? Yeah. And you can correct us if I'm wrong. Get up, eat some decent beer, go to the gym, maybe pop into the HQ or whatever and see what's going on, message a few people, try and sort some deals out. Yeah. Or are you actually on the tools designing? Um, so, today, after the podcast, Sunday, I always do me emails. Mm -hmm. So then, on Monday, the pressure's not on me to do my work as much. I've done it yesterday so monday morning i can delegate work right i have we had payments from these what are you doing now what's happening in the warehouse do we have deliveries in what we're designing this week i can i can speak to everyone and see what they're up to mm -hmm. and then delegate work and then i'll have emails to do in the afternoon and catch up on mm -hmm. but yeah i mean i'm in the office um i could be in there all day five days a week or i could be there three days a week so you're still hands-on yeah yeah still hands-on yeah yeah to be honest, the the I was spinning too many plates up until eighteen months ago. I was doing fucking most of it. There was not. There wasn't. From the outside, it looked like big company. We was was quite narrow. It was quite small. Probably too small. So we've had to get seniors in and put a bit of structure in place. How many staff you got? Um, Fifteen, sixteen. And then we have some freelance. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, to think where you where you've got to. We had a, we did have more, but we put a software system in place which half the warehouse staff last year. So was doing it really old school, picking off sheets, and then it's all on it's all machines now, and it's just half the staff. Is your is your main office here? Is uh, it in? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. It's in that's over in um, Saint Helens, hey, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you? Although I know you try and like. You, you know where you're at now you'll try and kind of understand the perks and stuff like that do you see many perks from having a brand yeah 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 it changed my life massively um i wouldn't know where to start yeah there's just there's just yeah so much so outside outside of the actual clothing yeah. what kind of perks come with owning a brand that's successful uh so if you want to talk from a finance point of view, say you was going on, um, say you're going away and you're going and you've got some summer pieces, you're taking pictures while you're away of your like summer collection. So I've just been to the Maldives, uh, and I got loads of content there, take a picture of all new products and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's a business expense. I've gone away mm -hmm. to take pictures of all the summer stuff, so you get to travel the world, yeah, while working, working. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. It's mad what you can do. Yeah. 32 year so old. So I'm getting, like, I've seen so much more of the world since I've had the brand. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I've met people from different cultures, different countries, and people who've become friends that I'd never meet in a million years. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? What What was your support le network like when you were younger, or certainly getting into the business and brand? And have you experienced much jealousy? Yeah. Yeah, you have do you? get it. Yeah. Um, have you had to cut people off on that? Uh, I don't go like, I don't go in like, um, lo I don't go local, like local pubs and that, I don't really go in much anymore just because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a bit of, I don't want people to think I think I'm something. Yeah, I get it. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think you're always going to get types of jealousy. In anything, if you do, if you're successful in anything. Do you have the same mates now as what you did then? Yeah. Before the brand? Yeah, yeah. My mates I grew up with will always be my mates. That's like the ones I went to primary school with and stuff. So I have my mates I grew up with. It was I was with all them yesterday, like seven, eight of us. Mm -hmm. And then I've had, I have really good mates now who've met along the way and as I've got older and stuff. Do you feel like has anybody tried to like 
leech off your success in any way? Have you ever experienced that? No. You just... I think, no, I've not really had anyone like that, no. Mm-hmm. I think... Just me, by getting you on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'm a, um, a good judge of character and like... Yeah, if, yeah. If I think someone is, they'll just be they'll just be gone tomorrow, do you know what I mean? Well, I think you need that, don't you? Yeah, to, yeah, To get yeah. to this point, um, you have to be good at fishing out what's, yeah. what's real and what's yeah, not. Yeah, for sure, 100%. When you talked about obviously the mortgage and, and, and all that, yeah, and I know we've touched on kind of like, you know, things that can go wrong and, and things that you've maybe regretted or or whatever. What what does like a dark day look like for you? Oh, uh, yeah, but bad day bad days are tough. You like you're fucking pulling your hair out. Nothing's going right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that can be anything. So a couple of weeks ago, we had a, like a warehouse breaking. That's a nightmare. That costs like 12 grand in damages. Getting better security in place. Mm-hmm. It was a secure... To be honest, we have like really good... It's very secure. It's like police response like that. Mm-hmm. Like everything goes off. Mm-hmm. So you, you're going to struggle, but it's the inconvenience of it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's what's a nightmare, things like that. Uh, other things are like something's got to land to go into JD on this date and then someone's telling you like it's stuck at the port yeah. and it, it can't be stuck at the port it needs to leave a Black Friday is stressful I, I love them do you? yeah because you hear a lot of brand owners talk about Black Friday being like a big point where it's like could have went the other way yeah I, I, fucking, I really love them um, but we had re- we've had really bad times with that where it's crazy to think about it now. We fell 12 days behind on orders from Black Friday once I had to turn the website off. To, oh for, a, for a brand owner to turn the website off is fucking stupid. But I was like, I've got a, I need to get these orders out because we're not catching up mm-hmm. and it's doing more damage than good. I don't care about the money. Mm-hmm. We just need to get these orders out to customers. Your marketing, it's quite like, I feel like it's unique. Certainly what you say on Instagram, the way you do things. How yeah. do you come up with marketing ideas and campaigns? With a few people have said this to me. With me, what it is, I just keep it really raw. Like, I won't try and make the most professional thing. I'll just mm-hmm. be like, we're a brand and these are the people wearing it. And it's that. And like, when we do the things with the motorbikes and um, any, other, any other things, it's where I grew up. It's like Salford, Manchester. It's just like, they're the people like who are there and around that. So if, if you could describe the Mercia avatar, what who is it? What do they do? Uh, <laughs> I'm coming with the bangers today, mate. Yeah. Um, the Mer- ah, I don't know. I don't know. It's just he's he's just your, your cool kid on the street. Is it? Yeah, the one who's like is the cooler one out of the group. Like, is a cool is a cool kid. Yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? He's confident. He do wears you, loud in tracks with badges all over him. Do you know what I mean? Do you, do you find that... Do you have customers that surprise you? That think, oh, I didn't know you'd be into this. No, but I do... Do you know what I do? Uh, what happens every now and again, I'll, I'll click on an order to see what people order. Mm-hmm. And a lot of customers, what they do, they'll buy what the models got on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, it's just, I like that, I'll buy that. I like it when customers place an order and I'm like, you're putting that with that, with that to make that outfit. And I'm like, I rate that outfit. That's my that. Yeah, I'm like, that's a fucking cool outfit that you've just bought. Because it might be an outfit I've not even thought about piecing together. Yeah, I'd yeah, have yeah. like, that's well, well in, mate. Would you, would you buy Mercia? Would I? I'd, so I'm 32 now. I'd, this stuff, mm-hmm. 100%. Um, and then... But yeah, because I would fucking design it, don't I? Yeah, design what I like. <laughs> I was thinking then. I'm trying to throw you off. What wouldn't I buy? I'd buy yeah. all of it, yeah. Do you do trainers? Don't do trainers, no. It's something we've toyed with. We've done slide. We dropped uh, sliders mm-hmm. last week that just absolutely flew out. I think they're meant to last, what we're in now, 29th. They're meant to last till end of August. And we've got like, looking at the sheet, we've got like three weeks worth of stock left and then it's gone. If someone listening or watching, right, is want yeah. to start their own, 
again, not trying to ask for secrets, but I think I want to try and give as much value because I feel like when I was doing my little bit years yeah. ago, I wish I could have seen other brand owners yeah. giving away, maybe do this, maybe do that. What would you say that if someone was starting, what should they focus on first? Is it a t-shirt drop? Is it a certain collection? Is it stay away from headwear? It, do you know what I mean? Like what kind of things would you say you need to be doing? Lower your risk as much as possible. So I fucked up a couple of times at the start where I'd be like, I'm going to order 200 of that. I like, might not have even, I've never even sold a piece of it, but 200 at the start is so many units of one thing. Mm -hmm. So I'd find someone, you might pay a little bit more, find somewhere who'll do you 50 t-shirts. Fucking, tw or get, yeah, somewhere who'll do you like 50 t-shirts, 20 t-shirts, pre-done tees, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you just print on top of, you just want to lower your risk and just try and get something to catch on and then you can grow that, mm -hmm. that volume, but don't think it's going to happen overnight because it's really not. Do you think it's a case of getting them t-shirts or whatever it may be and just going daft on Instagram and push? Or you just got to be busy. Got to be really fucking busy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I'd just, I'd just post, post, post videos, reels, TikToks. Every, every platform you can use, utilise it. Get your mates on it. Like, get your mates wearing it, even if you have to give them your mates. What would you avoid? Um, paying people... Uh, Paying influencers at the start, I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I think that there's better ways to put your, places to put your money. Marketing, mm -hmm. social marketing. Um, I think that ship sailed a long, long time ago. Yeah. Um, it's changing now, isn't it? It's changed so much, yeah. Like you say, organic, people want to see some organic, real stuff. real stuff. What do people get up to? Yeah, because the reason I ask you that, mate, when I, when I had a go at it, I remember sending people stuff and not asking. Yeah, yeah. And now and again, it didn't happen all the time because I yeah. sent a, a lot of stuff out. Now and again, there'd be someone wearing it. I'd be like, like that, that even, even looks better, the fact that I've not asked. So they've clearly liked yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Do you get many influencers asking you if they can work with you? Yeah, yeah, we get, yeah, we get quite a lot. But if they don't like, I'll look on their Instagram and if they don't fit it, I won't send it to them even if they've got a thousand followers I'm like, it doesn't suit you yeah so it's not about the following is yeah, it yeah it doesn't suit real. you and you don't suit they don't align so to align who would you say the biggest influencer you've worked with that aligns with your brand it's not really influencers it's more like uh, artists and footballers and stuff so Russ Millions used to message us quite a lot and he wanted it all mm -hmm. the time and he used to wear it in all his videos when he, when they were popping off and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and he genuinely really liked the brand. We never paid him a penny, he just loved the brand and mm -hmm. wore it a lot. Um, what One of the f biggest people we had was when he was at Arsenal, it was Aubameyang. He was probably mm -hmm. one of the first people who wore it. And I was like, fucking you know. hell. And I was like watching telly, it was like Arsenal v someone and he got off the coach with a cap on and I was like, that's cool. How did you? How did that happen? That's cool. His um, his friend messaged our Instagram, right, and said, um, "Can you send? I'm Obama Yang's mate. Can you send us some caps? He wants some caps." Mm -hmm. I was like, "Yeah, of course. That's fine." How do you vet them? Because I'm sure you'll get a lot of requests, like for a few free. I just claw them. Yeah, we get it all the time. Like we get it so much. I'll just look at the Instagram. Do you? Yeah, just be like, if you fit. Like, let's do it. So if it's not, not about the following, it's about how they look and yeah, how they yeah. go, how they Yeah, yeah. Do they fit the brand? Will it work? Uh, mm -hmm. Is the content good? But I never, I never pay them. So, so in that note then, who would be your ultimate? Like, if you could work with one person who you'd love to rep the brand? Ooh. It'd have to be... He's not my favourite artist, but say you had someone like Drake in it, it'd just, it'd yeah. just do numbers straight away. You wouldn't have the stock to do it. So you said he's not your favourite artist but yeah. from the numbers, but who is? Who who's who, Who's my favourite? Yeah, like I'll, who would you think that would be the not for sales, just who would be like the yeah, I think we're we're all right. Mm. Um if I could get anyone in it. See, I'd I'd love to see J. Cole in it because I love uh, J. Cole. Yeah, I love J. Cole, like he's sick, like I think he'd yeah. wear it and all. Yeah, Even I like that. him. He's cool. He's a yeah, cool yeah, guy, yeah, do you know what I mean? You don't see him. Very humble as well. He's so humble, gets about on a bike and that he just loves life, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. so it, that'd be fucking really cool to have him in it what would you say the coolest thing that having your brand's been has enabled you to do meet new people um, meet people of not higher value but uh, 
higher everything like access like access education circles putting me onto things and introducing me to new things and this is happening do you want to get involved and mm-hmm. yeah that for sure like it's opened a lot of doors things things that have happened that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have a brand stuff like yeah. that yeah have, have you ever have you ever came across someone who whether it would be through your brand whether it be financially your status in society now where you've gone who surprised you for good or bad where you've been like, actually I didn't know they'd be like that in real life because I, 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 it certainly happened to me a lot of times like what what kind of example so for instance I'm not gonna there's, there was a certain rapper who yeah, I yeah. met and uh, I was a massive fan yeah. and I met him and I wanted one of his t-shirts and I wanted to buy one of his t-shirts and he turns around to us and I knew they were on sale and I just asked him, I was like, Mick, where can I get a t-shirt? Not yeah. me just being a bit of a one of them, like, you yeah. know what I mean? A bit of a freebie. I was I was 20. I mean, I'm 34 now. Yeah. yeah. So when I did it, and he was he was massive at the time, and uh, he's still kicking around. And I, he said to us, he went, stop hassling us. Do you, wanna, do, you want, do you want me boxer shorts as well? Or something yeah. like that, like a proper See, ass. And I was like, I was like bro, like, and from then I was like, I can't believe that. But to me, I'd bought their music. I'd been That's to see them. I was, yeah. I was literally at a concert and I met them in the VIP. And that was the thing. And I was like, I can't believe like people can be like that. And it just made us change the way. Now I don't I don't get starstruck by people. It's weird. It's just like, no, you're just I, a normal guy. Like That went for me fucking a long time ago. Did it? Yeah, yeah. Like, no one... Um, there's no one like where they would make me starstruck. I don't Is think. it not? No. No. Because you're all human aren't you yeah, like, that's mad, that. when I was younger though I used to get autographs and, like that's how I first started making money as well mm-hmm. so I used to stand outside like football stadiums and training grounds and hotels mm-hmm. get like shirts signed and sell them and stuff on eBay when I was like 13 14 and um, I used to get really starstruck then but now I'm just like it's great I think even you saying that mate like I think you've you've clearly I think you'd make any business work yeah, you've got that type of attitude. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. I think that's what lacks me in a lot of people because they give up. They don't. They're not like me. I was getting mega buses and National Express buses up and down the country all the time to film free content for people, just yeah, in yeah. the hope of one of them day. Like, and then only over the last five years, when things have started to go, I've been like, all oh, right, so that's that's why. Yeah, and it you kind it kind of makes you realize like along the way, like as long as you're putting the graft in, you, you, something will work. Yeah, yeah. Do you know don't what give, I mean? Don't like, quit. Never quit. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Like, like what, what? The, it's the only way to guarantee failure is quitting. Like, just keep going. I I wanted to quit two or three times and was like, no. Do you think because you obviously putting your putting your mortgage without telling your your partner, yeah, yeah, like to get more money from the banks and whatnot. Do you think everyone needs to be that ballsy? Um, like, would you? You've say got to, you've you've got got to have you've got to have balls. Otherwise, you've got to do something someone else isn't going to do. You've got to push that limit. In mm-hmm. like people who are close to me know me. I do push the limit with everything. Like probably too much sometimes. I'll I'll push things further than I should. But in every anything in life, I'll do it. I'll just see what happens. What's the future like for Mercia? I know obviously there's certain things you you're going to be doing. You can't, yeah. you don't want to speak about. But what overall like where do you want to go with the brand? I know you said other territories and stuff like that. Yeah, I just want um we we're on the way to doing it um. Good foundations, staff. I think the staff are key. And I think good staff who are good fun. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, not someone who's miserable sat in the office. Like, you've got to have a smile on your face and stuff. You'll help carry the brand. And it, it just working in a happy environment and structure within business and stuff, that's where I want to be at to make me more content and give me more freedom to like spend time with the design the senior designers and really focus on the designs again do you have an exit strategy uh i did i did have mm-hmm. and now i'm just gonna run with it so you wouldn't sell it i would sell it i mean i know everything's got a price yeah but... yeah i would sell it i thought about selling it but for for now um now we've got some good structure and good people in place um I want to see where I can take this now. Do you know what your brand's worth? Yeah. What's it worth? Um, we, um, I reckon... Ballpark. 20 million. 
So if someone offered you 50 now, would you do it? 50? Aye. Right. Yeah, I'd be gone. Yeah. 30? <laughs> um, do you know what it is? It's, what will I do? Because I, th- well, this is what I was going to say. I think you being you. I'll have to stay you, working there. You'd start another brand, wouldn't you? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe start another brand or stay on there. Stay mm-hmm. on there like a creative director. Mm-hmm. I just don't own it anymore. I'd have to. I'd have to do something. So I have to do something to keep me ticking over. Hundred percent. And then, could I see someone else running my name? Like no. that's the thing, because you, it's your name as well. Like, that's it. that's my name, and it's no longer mine. Yeah, it's quite a frightening thought, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know it's happened to some people, unfortunately. Like in the last twelve months, mm-hmm. a couple of brands. Um, and it's unfortunate to feel for him, but yeah, it's yeah. You don't. Who knows what the future holds? You know, it's crazy when that happens to brands, and it's almost like brands getting taken away from people. Yeah, like overnight. And do you fear that, or do you think you're set where that can't happen? Uh, I thought it was happening with PSG. I thought it was happening with Bagai. I thought it was happening with Moe. Um, Adidas. They came after us, but weren't really anything. But the PSG Moe and Bagai, I thought it was curtains i lost weight i weren't sleeping i was looking fucking gray i remember my factories flew over <laughs> from turkey gray. i was fucking gray um my factories fl- flew over from turkey to see me and we walked across the road to look at all this stock i had to call back and they stopped me and was like are you okay because you you don't look okay i was like no nah, let's just keep walking fucking hell, it was man. tough yeah but I, I bottled it all up as well and just mm. ran with it on my own sort of thing but we got through it and, and we're in a really good position now. It's good. It's good. Unbelievable. Yeah. Ben, I just want to say thank you for coming on, mate. No problem, mate. It's uh, been good. It's no, been a pleasure catching up. Do you up. enjoy it? Yeah, it's good, mate. It's, it's easy. Been, been brilliant, mate. No, yeah. thanks for your time, mate. No, it's good. Cheers, mate. Top one, mate. Legend, bro. So you've made it to the end of the episode. Fair play. If you want to watch more episodes like this, click here.